is going to lead us in prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now thanking you for another day and thank you for watching over us and caring for us. We ask that you'd be with us as we take on the business of this uh, town. I pray that you'd guide us and direct us. I pray that you'd be with each citizen in it. I pray that you'd watch over them and continue to bless and care for them and help us to know each day, God, you're with us. Continue to be with us. I thank you for the many blessings of life and I thank you for all that you do. Go with us now as we go through this time and help us to be able to know that you're being leading us through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. I want to say it's good to be in the meeting tonight. Last uh, month ago, my blood pressure was 230 over 126 about uh, 30 minutes before meeting. And I had to go, and I want to thank everybody for their prayers and asking about me everywhere I see them when I go in town. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for that. So, all right. First thing we have on here is roll call from our Ms. Pryor. Town of Adelia Board of Aldermen roll call for the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen dated April 11th, 2023. Alderman Betts. Present. Alderwoman Denby. Present. Alderman Gardner. Here. Alderman Probst. Here. Alderman Smith. Here. May I let the record show that a quorum is present and accounted for. All right. Thank you much. In front of you have our uh, minutes from our previous meeting. Is there any questions, additions, deletions? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Motion made by Alderwoman Denby. They hear second. Second, second by Alderman Probst. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. We we'll come to public comments on our current agenda items. You know, this is something we put in that uh, that we will do each time. That's not to say that we won't take some questions maybe later on in the meeting. But this is a good time if you have something you want to talk about. That's on the agenda. This would be where you do that. Is there anyone have any comments or anything on the agenda? Okay, if not, we're going to move on to the first thing. We have a presentation of our financial statements for February 2023. Ms. Deborah Moak. Tonight's financial statements include the balance sheet as of February 28, 2023, the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances for the eight months ending February 28, 2023. A summary budget to actual comparison by fund and a detailed budget to actual comparison by department. These financial statements have been distributed to all departments and aldermen for their review. In summary, the town has combined cash in the bank of $8.8 .8 million, included restricted funds of $5 million in the hydro fund and $1.9 million in the sales tax fund. Investments of $9.7 million which includes the hydro reserve fund of 2.3 million, 1.5 million in the general fund, 705,000 of ARPA funds, and the 5 million in the hydro funds invested in LAMP. Total assets are 50 million, total liabilities are 7.1 million, fund balance, combined fund balance is 42.8 million. The statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance for the eight months ending February 28, 2023 indicates combined revenues of $28.8 million, total expenditures of $33.7 million for a change in net position of a negative $4.9 million. At the end of February, revenues and expenses, expenses should be at or around 67% of budget with 33% remaining. Overall, total revenues were at 56% of budget. Expenses were at 68% of budget. As approved by the board, the debts of the town were paid off in January in the total amount of $10.7 million. These debt payoffs are the reasons for the lower than expected net change in position. At this time, the budget has not been revised to reflect these board approved changes. Revenues are lower than expected due to the lower hydro royalties caused by low levels of the Mississippi River but are offset by the increase in sales tax revenue, which is at 78% of budget. Expenses are higher due to somewhat, due somewhat by the cost of repairs to the conveyor belt at the port in the amount of 412,000. We have received 358,000 in insurance proceeds. In addition, natural gas purchases have exceeded the budget by 432,000 in eight months. Capital outlay is at 40% of budget. Personnel expenses are at 68% of budget. 
the town has received 1.4 million of ARPA funds. From this amount, from this amount, we have used 165,000 to help offset the citizens' electric costs for three months, and 63.9 million thousand to help supplement the employer retention payments in 2022. The remaining amount has not been appropriated. Budget revisions will be necessary for fiscal year 2022-23. We have begun the budget process for the 23-24 fiscal year. That includes my Okay, thank you, Deborah, for that report. Has anyone got a question for Deborah on the financial report? Uh, thank you, Deborah, for keeping us up to date, especially on the ARPA funds or anything this year. Uh, we probably will, and then our budget discuss again, maybe using those funds to pay that LEPA bill. That way those funds go to all of our citizens who all struggle during COVID and can all benefit from that. And uh, that will lower the cost of our electricity bill on a monthly basis, especially during the summer months when it's so high. So uh, anyway, any no questions of Deborah? Deborah, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, next thing on not, item number two on our agenda is board discussion vote on approval of signed applications. Only one we have tonight is Ms. Leslie Ann's Vintage Emporium. And you have that in your packet. She's here. She's here? Okay, hey. hey. How's it going? Tell us about your business a little bit while you're here. So you, you're on Facebook Live. You got an opportunity. Here you go. <laughs> Cheap advertising. How are y'all? My name is Leanne. I am one half of Leslie Ann's. Leslie Parker um, is at a board meeting at ACCS tonight. But we do have these banner signs, but we are going to get a a, either a metal or a wooden sign we hadn't decided yet and the reason we haven't gotten it yet is because we are considering taking in that second part of that building so we didn't want to put it up on one side and then have to move it to the center so hopefully we'll um, know by the summer if we can if we're going to get that side or not okay that makes sense for sure so anyway do we want to just go ahead and prove her for what she's got there it's it's I can I can hold it out, but it's basically the picture that we've had. It's just yes, it's well done. I mean, a yeah. Longer form. This was done online. But you're going to do a permanent once we you once. Are. Yeah, that's fine. Can I get a motion to approve that temporary uh, oh sign until they uh, decide what they're going to do as oh far as buildings? Motion, motion made by Alderman Betts. Second. second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you for for opening business in Medallion. Hey, do I have to stay or can I go? You can <laughs> unless you just want to now. <laughs> You're welcome to. <laughs> we certainly encourage you to. Okay. All right. Next thing we have is board discussion vote on approval of beer permit for Family Dollar Store in Medallia. Is any questions on that? They've submitted their application. Do I hear a motion? We accept that for Family Dollar. I make a motion. Motion made by Alderman Smith. I hear a second. I'll second. Second by Alden Betts. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Next thing we have is presentation of the financial audit for Town of the Day for fiscal year 2021 22 by Mr. Scott Adams with Silas Simmons. Is he? He's not here. Huh? I don't think he's here. I didn't. I usually talk to you. He was supposed to come, but I did remind him about COVID, so he didn't show up. Okay. Uh, I guess. Next time, okay. Oh, uh, we'll we'll go on with that. But I will say that you know I, it was a very very good audit. I mean, uh, this may actually makes the second or third year we didn't have any findings. The findings we did have were I, I don't really want findings because the deposit was not made daily from the city court. I don't think as much of a finding. But uh, as far as any kind of everybody's doing a good job of being good stewards of the, the finances of the town and that includes everybody so everybody in the offices and everybody all the staff's been very good the department heads have all run good departments being very uh, being good stewards of the money they spend uh, Lee would tell you that back in the day when I first got in office there, there would be invoices that tall and now they're probably more like this you know people just being more you know better better stewards of the money so thank you all very much all right let's move on next we have a board discussion vote on a resolution to approve a bid to grid source incorporated llc for installation of fiber optic phase 2a now we have bobby here bobby you want to tell us a little bit about uh, phase 2a or what that's going to, what that entails this uh 
it's paid for by the state uh, through their capital outlay and it's the uh, south side of Highway 84, the backbone for the south side of Highway 84, and it pretty much parallels, for the most part, Highway 84 back behind those businesses, and that'll give us a uh, backbone to be able to uh, <clears throat> run our distribution off of, also to be able to run our uh, cam cameras and such as that off of. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Anybody got any questions for Bobby on that? What? Is, all right. I hear a motion. We accept the resolution. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Alderman Best. Here a second. Second. Second by Alderman Probst. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go on to our next thing. We have is. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, number six is public hearing on resolution authorizing the town of Bidet to enter to a purchase option agreement for industrial inducement purpose, purposes. As y'all know, this is the 40 plus or minus acres that uh, uh, Syrah will maintain an option on for their phase three development, which is they have to have in place before uh, they can move forward with their uh, DOE uh, grant and going on with their next phase. Because just like the only time you're dealing with, with especially the federal government, if you don't have property, where are you going to do this? They, you know, they're not going to go spend the investment and do the investment to approve it if you don't have the uh, property ready to go. To do the do the work so this is what that's for and again uh, this is for us to enter into that this is the uh, the uh, this is we're going to enter into a public public comment period and we're going to have to entertain a motion to do that because this is a, a, a purchase option that we've got to have approved and have public hearing on so can I hear a motion we go into public hearing Motion. motion made, second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. aye. All right, we're in a public hearing now. Has anybody got a comment on the property uh, option being offered to Syrah? Okay. No questions? All right. Do I hear a motion we exit public hearing? I make the motion. Motion made by Alderwoman Demi. Do I hear a second? Second, Alder second by Alderman Probst. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we've had the public meeting. Now we'll go to the board discussion and vote. Board discussion and vote to approve a resolution authorizing the town of a day to enter to a purchase option agreement for industrial inducement purposes. Is there any discussion? Now here a motion we approve the resolution. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Alderman Bent. Second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. None opposed. All right. Thank you all. Now we have with us Ms. Jeannie Archer, our tax assessor, and she's going to talk to us about our current millage issues for the town of a day. Good evening, everybody. Hey. Um, so millages are something that we have to adopt every year. Y'all see me regularly, and um, it's just one of those things that has to be done. And um, this year, y'all are currently at 3.37. If you stay at your millage rate of 3.37, you will collect somewhere around 124,000 um, based on last year's figures. Our current figures are nowhere near done yet. So that gives you an idea of what you would collect where you're at. If y'all decided to roll forward, um, you could actually roll forward to 3.39. It's not very much. You would only collect about uh, $740 more. With that being said, out of that, you know, you got to think about too that you have to advertise uh, twice in the paper and um, you've got to put it in there that you're doing this without uh, further vote approval, voter approval and things like that. So um, the difference that it takes you to do all the things and the length of time, um, it would you would only benefit about $740 a year more by rolling forward. But that's your decision if you want to stay at the 3.37 or roll forward to the 3.39. And um, uh, just to give you an idea, y'all still have around uh, 2,350 taxpayers uh, here in the city limits of Vidalia. And based on a $200,000 house, I just did a little 
calculation here. Uh, your city taxes only run at the current millage rate, $67.40. So it's really low, and um, I've looked at it before, and if y'all are not the lowest municipality, you are one of the one of the lowest municipalities in the state for the millage. So your, your taxpayers should be grateful for that. And uh, with that being said, if, if anybody's got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions of the assessor? Any questions? I want to I want to emphasize what she said, especially to people listening on Facebook, is that she said if we're not the lowest in the state at valorum tax wise, we are amongst the lowest. And what that means is is that you know when people, you know when you see these other the other towns, that, you know I guarantee you our 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 utility cost is equal to or less than overall than anybody else, and our taxes are way lower. You know, I, I promise you this is a great, wonderful place to live. And it, it just, because a lot of people fund their police departments or public safety departments out of their t sales tax. That's how they do it. And we don't do that. We get, you know, because we get, how much did you say the total would be? 120 something thousand dollars? About a 124. That's not yeah, <laughs> much money for us to do much with. But anyway, but Jeannie, thank okay. you so much for that report on that. And I think the next thing we will have to do is. Uh, based on that report to uh, go ahead and do the uh, uh, adoption of the uh, millage. I make a motion we adopt the 3.37. Okay, motion made by Alderman Best for 3.37. Second by Alderman Probst. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, thank y'all very much. Okay, that was item number 10. Uh, next thing we have on is the board discussion and vote on the day police department personnel. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, Frankie's here with us, and Morgan still full time. Is that is what? She'll be a dispatcher. Dispatcher? Okay. Yeah. Any questions of uh, Mr. Carroll? If none, I hear a motion to accept. I'll make a motion. Uh, motion made by Alderman uh, Betts. I hear a second. I'll second. Second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, next thing we have is board discussion vote to approve renewal of contract for municipal membership with Air Med Care Network, which we have been doing for the last six years, providing emergency airlift services for the town of a day residences. I don't see anybody here with Air Med. Is there any questions on that? We do that each year, I think. The same. Hmm? Everything staying the same. Uh, was the cost the same? 19, I think. It's, huh? Yes. It's 19,000, isn't it? Yeah. I make the motion to approve. Motion made by Alderman Gardner here second. Second. Second by Alderwoman Demby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Now we have the introduction of an ordinance to amend the day of Louisiana zoning and development code and repeal the currently existing zoning code. <clears throat> to set the table on that, the, the uh, planning commission, which Ms. Cassandra Lynch is the chairman of, uh, they met and they discussed the development of the racetrack that's going to be coming across from Walmart and I think it's going to be a real nice addition. I've been going into some of those stations outside of Adalia and they're really, really nice. Uh, but what the, that area was zoned community commercial or commercial community, which uh, it, it, it didn't, or did they get that backwards? Or commercial, mixed. commercial mixed, which didn't allow for that type of store. And all the properties across the street and up and down the, the thing are, are, are zone community commercial so this was just changing that they had made it um, commercial uh, commercial mixed to accommodate a uh, mixed use development of whether it's uh, apartment houses you know small shops and stores that couldn't have anything like that in that particular zone so this just got it to where they can uh, develop that property like everything else up and down Carter Street basically is that in a nutshell Miss Cassandra what okay. <laughs> So if there's any questions on that, this is basically we're approving the actions of the, uh, of the uh, Planning Commission. I want to thank them for the work they do. It's a, it's a, a thankless job, I think, that they meet and, and go over things to keep our town and, and moving forward. And I want to thank, thank you for serving and thank you for your leadership on that, yeah. Ms. Lynch. So we have that now. We have that. Do we? Uh, this is just an introduction only. We don't vote on it tonight. It's just an introduction only. We will vote on it next meeting. Okay, the next one I was, I'm bringing up, I put this on the agenda. Uh, we have been, un, and, and Miss Regina Fleming's here, and she does a good job being the director of the convention center. But we get bombarded with different uh, uh, nonprofits, 
school uh, organizations that want to use the convention center and you know and honestly I think on some of the events that we have we allow the school board to have some events uh, that's been in place for since it's been open we have different uh, groups that if it's you know public meetings whether it's the library something like that we we give consideration that open to the public it's not any kind of restricted no admission charge and things of that nature just for community development community getting together things of that nature we take into consideration but I just want to put the, the discussion out there we don't have to make a, uh, a decision tonight but I think we need to look at the, the fact that this was, you know, if we think that we're ever going to have a convention center that turns a profit, we're living in a, a bizarre world, so to speak. It's never going to, it's like the ballparks over there. You're never going to, what we spend in expense there, you know, we see the benefit from kids and families coming together in our community. And when they leave there, they're going to go to convenience stores, they're going to go to Walmart, they're going to go to uh, restaurants and those things and, and the benefit is, is not something that's really tangible you can put your hands on but it's, it's a real benefit the convention center is the same thing uh, you know when I first ran for office I was wanting to, I thought about a community center but then I said why would we go spend money when we've got a community center there but we've got to come up and I just want to hear some uh, so we don't have to go into d deep uh, discussion tonight but I want y'all to be thinking about what we can do legally uh, to maybe be able to accommodate some of these things. And I, I'll use, for example, I had, uh, you know, the high school, the day high school, wanted to have a football banquet. Well, then the baseball team would have a baseball banquet. And I, I said, look, is there any possible for the day to have all their banquets at one time? We could maybe, you know, accommodate that kind of thing because it's for our schools. And, and I feel like that we should bring our community together through our schools because it's really important for our kids because outside of school that's the only time families get together that you get to meet your classmates parents to see and, and interact with one another so I just want us to be thinking about what we can do to make this a better experience not only for uh, our citizens but also everybody in the area and have some limitations on what it is you know some things I'm not in favor of anybody selling tickets for something uh, I'm, I'm talking about community sponsored events that are open free and somebody's not there to you know to make a profit or try to make profit and then with those things we just any thoughts or ideas out there you want us to just me and Regina and uh, get a few more people on a little small committee to investigate what other citizens uh, cities do or towns with their municipal I mean with their convention center our community center thoughts comments well, I definitely want to uh say that you know um, uh, the schools and different things like that I think it's that's a that's a place that they can get together uh, if they can have a sports banquet that includes all the sports that would be be great making I think uh, I think we even had graduation down there one time because of the weather uh, we need to accommodate them I, I, I think that um, especially if it's somebody that's that's in our town that Nonprofit or something like that, they have it. I, I think that's part of the benefit of being inside the, the city limits. That's the reason why we built it, uh, is for them to use. Um, I don't know what the current schedule and price is right now. I know, I know we used to, we used to, we've got one, but um, I don't remember what it what it is. But I think we do need to take a look at. at well, what we that. Th there's a lot of things to consider. Number one, you have when it's you do have a function that requires security requires insurance that you know if they, somebody has a function that requires insurance and you know when you say a nonprofit, there's nonprofits that want to have events there but they sell tickets to right right and you know that's you know that's what if, that's what I just want to see if anybody has any ideas on that what we could do to make it easier for the people like when the schools call me up and they want to have a, a banquet or something similar to that you know we I don't have to just turn them down because well if we can't do that that's a donation you know so we want to look and see what we can do to to make the experience of our convention center better but not work Regina and them to death with having you know five people coming up for, for meetings all day and not just because it's there uh, 
so that's that's some of the things we want to talk about to make her life easier as well to uh, make better decisions on serving our community with the convention center because it was paid for with public funds and we want to serve, help help our community if they need to uh, you know people having a wedding there or something I can see us having a you know a charging for that because they're not gonna go somewhere else and have a facility that right. nice without paying for it All right you know productions like that you know uh, things like where it's ball you know the the Mardi Gras balls the uh, the other things like that we need to charge for you know that's something that they charge monies for to in regards to who it is and we've land, landed some of those in the last few years uh, and they've been very nice events at our at our facility but uh, it doesn't seem like I've got a whole lot of people just you y'all okay with us just looking at that and coming back to y'all with a recommendation on what other cities and towns do I was gonna ask on that you was talking about local nonprofits like what are what would be what would be some Virginia that's using it that are local nonprofits that sell tickets? You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about selling tickets, making a profit, but they're not profit. I guess they're I guess they're not making a profit. I don't know what you're. I know what you're talking about. Probably one of them is women's club. Right. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, they, it's a, and the miss and see that's one like the, that's their civic organization. They're right. nonprofit. The Miss Vidalia pageant is the, one of the largest mm. events held at that convention center that's very well run, very, very, very nice event. Right. And, you know, and, and uh, but it's, 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 you know, there's a way to look at it. That's, they do that to help fund that event, but they, it's open to the public. It's open to, there's not a closed deal where they're just selling members only. It's open to anybody who wants to attend, anybody who wants to put their child into a, uh, beauty con. It, there's there's so many parameters out there. I just you know I I don't want to get caught and not make a right decision on somebody that wants to use it, and us not make a you know not serve our community by letting them use it. And because it is tough with all the different types of people that come up, you know. Then you start getting people coming from out of town that's going to get a resident to say, oh, go show up for this, and we're going to get this. And we go over there and get it for free. See what I'm saying? I mean, you might have. <laughs> so, there's a lot of parameters we got we got to work on that, that that make that. Gene, just uh, an example, Mr. Craves would be the chamber. Yeah, the um, chamber. We yeah, are sure. nonprofit, but we we do sell tickets to come to the annual gala. Right, right. Um, but it's to cover your meal. Right. Um, and we do have a drawdown, you know, but it's nonprofit, but you know, and. I don't know where else could hold that many people that come to things like that. Just something to. I mean, yeah, just I've, to I've give got you a chance that they y'all use it. There, there's so many. I mean, each month they use even yeah, the Jim Bowie room for their lunch, and right. which I think that's what it should be for. I mean, right. we can. Uh, it's it's important. I think it bring, brings community together in a place that they can come together. It's very nice, and uh, which, you know. Uh, Anyway, we, we'll work on that. I don't want to. We can talk all night about the different things that come up. But Miss Regina was worried about this portion of the meeting tonight. She's kind of nervous about it. But, uh, yeah. You still nervous, Regina? Okay. You good? Okay. All right. Yeah. Which but, one I'm working you worse, Regina? Sorry. I, which one? I'd like to say one thing. One of those nonprofits is working you the worst. I guess which one is the. All of. All of. You know, uh, talking to Smith. Just talking about the different events and. There's been some good events in there, but I tell you, it, it's not like the brightest stars ball. I mean, right. if, if you ever got a chance to go to that, that's amazing. That, that's, if you hadn't been to one of those, you need to go. Please make you leave there thankful to be who we, you're really blessed. So, it's coming uh, okay, there's no decision. We'll we'll work on that, Regina. We'll get with some other so. Okay, next thing we're going to do, I, I put this on there. Uh, um, Mr. Rowland and, and the Beautification Committee have said this many times. It's board discussion on littering within the town of a day. That is a, that is a pet peeve of mine. I can't tell you, when I see somebody going down the highway or anywhere and they just throw out their Popeye's bag or their, and it, it's just, it's, I, I want to encourage and I, I hope that Ronnie is patrolling that riverfront people eating crawfish and just throwing their heads right there all on the, on the ground and we really need to start enforcing and Frank I'm not saying they don't but we need to start you know watching if they see somebody doing anything uh, in parking lots or anywhere uh, I hope we start writing tickets 
I would like to see us issue tickets, may issue a warning for somebody, but if they get a second offense or something, we need we need to keep our town <coughs> clean. Our men work so hard on keeping our town clean. I'm so proud of the work they do. Our community is clean, but it's a everyday job, I promise you, uh, of keeping it clean. And I just want to thank our guys that keep it that way, but I think we need to give them some help. And as a citizen, I promise you, one time I was walking in Walmart and there was somebody parked in a handicapped parking spot that wasn't handicapped, number one, that got me. And the first thing they did, they threw out a, a big old Sonic bag full of milkshake and all that. And I, was turned, I walked and I turned around. I went back, I said, I can't let this go. I went back, I picked it up. I said, I am not, I said, I'm gonna throw this away for where you from? From Ferret, I said, you can do this in Ferret. But we don't do this here. I'm gonna throw this away for you, but don't do this no more. And by the way, you parked in another handicapped parking spot. But, but anyway, that, I think enough of us need to, you know, if we see something like that, don't get in trouble, don't be confrontational, but remind them, hey, look, we, we want to keep our community clean. So, anyway, having said that, I just would, uh, Frankie, if you'll just take that, Ronnie, you're here. If you'll just, you know, kind of watch and patrol that riverfront, you're doing a great job. Okay. Uh, the board discussion and vote on installing early warning sirens in the town of a day. I've had a lot of requests for this to discuss it. There's pros and cons to this. Uh, we have been pushing code red on all of our utility bills for you to call and sign up with code red. It works, I promise you. <laughs> uh, it will wake you up in the middle of the night whether you have a dial-in phone, whether you have a, a cell phone, whatever it might be, it will alert you of any kind of uh, weather warning or otherwise. Uh, Bobby has gotten me estimates right now. I think the last estimate we got, Bobby, was what, 148,000 or 168? Okay. The first ones came in, and there, there was two or three locations to put sirens. And what they would do is they would warn you in the event of a, of, of a, a hurricane, I mean a tornado warning, so to speak. You know, I can walk outside if it's, I'm a, I'm a weather watcher, if it's kind of anything, any kind of watcher or something, I stay outside and look. And if there's ever a warning, Natchez, I can hear Natchez's siren going off all the way over here. Yeah. Like you can hear them over where you live? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but then there's, you know, if you don't have anything, you don't woke up the whole town, there's going to be people mad at you. So what you, uh, well, I want to see what the council's thought is. Do they want to pursue this further and maybe put it in the budget next year to get uh, this, the warning? sirens and how they would be operated and worked and who would actually trigger them. Uh, I think it's done by the National Weather, National Weather Service is the one who would, who would, you know, it wouldn't be us. You know, we won't be standing by a light switch to turn it on. <laughs> we, we, have, we can have, we can have the ability to have the trigger an alarm ourselves, but the, the way that it's normally set up is basically just National Weather Service, and I think uh, you can also have like the EO, uh, your emergency preparedness if need be, and stuff like that. And there's, you know, it's not just weather too. I mean, you know, we, we have chlorine gas at our water plant, and they've had some outbreaks once or twice before in the past. They had an evacuation one time years ago. Yeah. Sure. You know, so if you have a, a leak in chlorine gas, you you can't breathe that. You die. So, you know, if we had something like that, a, a breach of some chlorine gas, have an accident where that's, you know, that happens, you would have a warning sign to, to get some people aware to move around and say, hey, what's going on? What's the warning sign for? So, what's the alderman's thoughts on that? Is that, a, is that an investment y'all want to look at doing? Or? I like the idea. Yeah. Um, uh, I know uh, Code Red, uh, I have, uh, I was on, uh, <clears throat> I was visiting my, <clears throat> my dad two weeks ago up there, and uh, their code red system <clears throat> hit my cell phone about 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, that was, that was that storm that was coming across going to, to Mississippi, so, uh, yeah, it, it gives you a joke, but uh, I was glad that it was, it was there, and I think the sirens are probably, you know, give us a joke for a little while, but we'll be glad if something happens, we can be prepared for it. Well, we, and I bring it up because with us being in discussion of our budget, it would be a good time to put it in there if, if, if that's what you want. What about from the public? Do y'all like the idea, public, publicly? Mayor, I have one in my front yard, and uh, 
and um, it goes off. And I've never had any thing come through there. And it goes off, and it goes off, and it goes off. <laughs> Well, that's that was my concern. You're gonna be you're gonna be making people mad if if, if it goes off. You wake them all up. House is closest uh, for for 500,000 yards around. You're gonna get complaints unless something comes through and blows their house away. Then they're be glad. <laughs> but if nothing happens, you will get a complaint. Okay. All right. We got. We'll we'll do more work on that and see what you know. Would be the I'm gonna talk to uh, Mayor Gibson and see what his response has been over Natchez with the ones they have and if they take very much complaint people complaining about them. So, all right, thank you all much. Uh, last thing on our agenda, I just want to give some project update on a lot of things. Uh, we got our new ambulance in, uh, and it's very very nice. I looked at it. I've been out of town. I just got didn't want to go and looked at it. Our citizens have a very very first class nice uh, ambulance if they need it heaven forbid they need it but if they do need it it's going it, it's got all the bells and whistles it's very nice so uh, Doug y'all got anything Mark, you want to say about it would like to thank the board and the citizens of the day for allowing us to get that particular truck which is not much more expensive than those um, but it is uh, one of the nicest around here and our guys are very proud of that they they they're very proud of it therefore um, it it'll better help us to serve the people in all weather conditions it has it's safer for our medics because of the new safety systems in it uh, it's safer for our patients um, it's, it's just a very nice truck. It's the same truck that East Baton Rouge uh, EMS or Baton Rouge EMS put in their fleet. Same area. Um, but it is a super nice truck. Uh, we're going to hopefully get it in service within the next week or so when we can get it certified through the state. Um, we'll, we'll put out some through the, the mayor's office, some literature and some pictures and some things so that the citizens can see the equipment that they purchased. Um, and they would, they would be very proud. It's, it's got some features in it that benefit us and our patients. Um, it's got uh, decon decontamination lights in the ventilation system which kills uh, viruses and bacteria with UV lights. Um, we do disinfect it after every run, but the air is something that's hard to disinfect. So as it goes through the circuit of circulation system in the truck, it's decontaminated. So it kills viruses. So we don't reinfect somebody or infect our next patient. So it, it has some things that, that our old truck didn't have because when we got it, it wasn't available. Um, but it is a whole lot safer unit for our, again, our medics and our patients. So it's us getting our patient to the hospital safely is our primary goal. But again, my guys are very proud of it. They're walking a little taller. And we just want to thank everybody for allowing us to purchase that truck. It took a long time to get it, but it was worth the wait. Yeah. We just hope, just hope nobody has to use it. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, sir, what our prayers are. If we out of the station, it would be fine with me. <laughs> okay. But again, thank you all. And the reason the chief is not here, he had a doctor's appointment. He's getting a little older, he's got to go out of town. Tell the truth to Percher, Biden. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, thank you, Doug. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do a quick uh, project update for you. Uh, the, uh, the water plant improvements are moving forward. Uh, they're, 
uh, we're getting close on our funding. The, the uh, governor's office is going to put it in his budget, which will speed up the process of having those monies move from uh, P5 to P, uh, P1 and, and, and fully fund the, uh, the uh, water plant. Uh, so that that's good news, and then they were going to add another seven or eight million dollars on uh, that global uh, state capital outlay projects that we have for utility upgrades. So I want to thank the governor for uh, saying he's going to put that on his on his budget. So that's that's a big help right there. So uh, the Vidae Port Phase Two is moving forward. They, uh, the sea, the wetland determination hadn't been received yet. Uh, they're waiting on Geotech to finish up their borings and things of that nature. However, uh, we did uh, proceed to move forward with the, uh, the sur uh, seepage analysis and soil analysis. So that survey has been done. So they're going to be moving forward phase two, which is development of the slack water portion of the port, which is going to be big for Syrah as they move forward with their project going into phase three. Our roads, uh, everything's been it's ready to open for bids. Those bids should be open. We will be completely overlaying Peach all the way up to the new overlay where we did it last time. Myrtle Street will be overlaid. Alabama Street from Riverside all the way to Oak Street will be overlaid. And the old part of Am from uh, Concordia uh, Avenue uh, toward Carter Street will be, that will be completely overlaid. overlaid. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and use some of that reclaim to move over. The, the town owns property behind the junior high that the Concord uh, Youth uh, uh, and Youth Development uh, uh, Group, uh, we're gonna, and there's a walking trail back there, we're gonna probably use that reclaim because we need room to put it. So that would be a logical spot to put it and we'll smooth it out and make a nice walking trail back behind it. Uh, I, I, I walk back there on a regular basis, really a nice, you know, I just hope the bears don't show up. They, they, they've been having a bear show up back there, so. Uh, but anyway, that's what's going on with roads, and we're going to be analyzing the other roads that's going to need some overlay, and that we're identifying those now as we as we go about town. The next ones to put on the project list. Uh, the Vidae Slough project, everything's been completed on that. All the funding's there. Uh, all we're waiting on right now is to make sure there's uh, any final permitting from the Corps, because you're within 1,500 feet of the levee. The Corps has some issues, some permits, and that's we're waiting on them for some final permitting on that and we'll be moving forward on that. It's ready to go, other than the, the final permits uh, that, need, that we need from them. All the surveying has been, com uh, been completed. The uh, funding uh, uh, apparatuses are in place to, to fund it, and that's all we're waiting on. The Bidet Wastewater Improvements, we've had two separate funding agencies that we applied through FEMA and also the Water Sector Program. Uh, GOSEF is reviewing some of those applications and we won't know from uh, FEMA until June whether or not we're going to get those uh, through one of the two on that as far as improvements on our sewage. Uh, we, uh, our Vidae Fiber Optic, Bobby's talked about already. Uh, they're going to be opening bids, uh, or they, no, they've already opened the bids, and those, those have been awarded moving forward with those. Uh, we're still waiting on a cost estimate on raising our water wells on the riverfront. This is a mandated by uh, by the uh, state to raise that uh, move that water well up above the st uh, flood stage, uh, 100 year flood stage level. And we're just waiting on uh, a time frame to uh, Louisiana Department of Health on that. Uh, the wastewater treatment aeration system, we're, we're same thing, we got applications in waiting on any kind of acknowledgement of that. Uh, we put up, uh, we finished, completed uh, the erosion control and fencing around the port. Y'all realize, no, we had some, some vandalism out there. Insurance did pay, uh, but we put up a fence around it to keep people out. Uh, and we've talked about the, the road project. The drainage improvements that you're seeing, I want to apologize to the citizens for Murray Drive over there by the high school. Uh, when they got into that project, they went to digging in uh, to that, and they, there was a 12-inch water main that was right in line with the culverts, and they had to order a new type of uh, surrounding uh, and Cornell's done a good job staying on top of this. Uh, they were going to go in and, and maybe want us to move that line, which would have been a very, very big undertaking that we didn't want to put the, the citizens in that area at risk of being out of water for, for a long time. Thank you. And so we, uh, they've come up with a, a way to go around them. Those, the, the, 
the culvert will, I mean, the line will be in the line of the culvert, but it will not hurt the flow or capacity of that culvert at all. So uh, thank you, Cornell, for staying on top of that. And, uh, but that's why, the, that's what the holdup is. They're waiting on uh, the type thing, uh, apparatus that they can put in place that would enclose that and not hurt it. So that's what, and that, that's correct, right? Okay. All right. Uh, the other thing I've got is uh, I have Miss Pyre uh, Wilson. I think I don't know if Lorraine's going or and, and Hannah. They're going tomorrow to, uh, to the LCDBG uh, to look at re or going back with the blighted program. Uh, we're going to have to look at. We're investigating. You know, Ms. Hugh Cheryl uh, Walker is our new city judge, and uh, we were told by the LMA she couldn't serve as the court administrator of the blighted property. So we're going to have to discuss that. They're going to check on that, and also funds available uh, through the LCDBG to start back up on our blighted properties. We have some. We they've done a great job over the last few years of getting property on uh, the blighted properties down we're going to pick that back up and get very aggressive back on that so thank them for the work that we've got we've got these three ladies uh Pierre wilson hannah junkin and miss loran scott working on a lot of different uh, grants and working on a lot of different things for us it's going to be good for our citizens as we move forward uh, i want to say ronnie wedgworth uh, i want to thank he got hurt in line of duty here a couple weeks ago he was helping work a uh, accident at the, up here by the uh, home hardware and with sirens and ambulances and fire trucks everywhere somebody he got in this vehicle and they rear-ended him and he was in the, he was hurt pretty he shook up pretty bad but we want to thank him for uh, <laughs> being strong he came back to work the next Wednesday so yeah, that's just, uh, yesterday was my first day back after a week yeah I've got I've got bruises and in places I never thought I'd have. <laughs> they smacked him pretty good. It's about 40, 20, 40, 45 miles an hour. It's a and, uh, and a dead, and a dead stop. You, you know, most people go through their rubberneck and they slow down want to see what's going on. But it just, it, you know, and I had just got back in the car with a fixed equipment, you know, open up the road, the westbound lane, right up there at the dead, and to the floor. And I just I sat back down in my car waiting that chance to get my seatbelt on. That's when he got it. Mm. And it just it made a mess out of car. <laughs> well, we're glad you're okay, and, and <laughs> that's the main thing. The, the vehicles can be replaced. So. Our ambulance services and the fire department, uh, when we were talking about that a while ago, and I don't mean to carry any longer, but uh, the, those guys know what's going on out there. Our, you know, the fire department ambulance, the AMR, uh, and, and Trinity Medical Center, it, it, they were very thorough as far as cat scans and, and, and everything. And thank the Lord, there was nothing but something I can't do. Well, good deal. We're glad, we're glad you're all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, guys. It's fire department and everything, but they're on top of it. Yeah, I, I agree. We have the best of the best. Okay, uh, on April the 23rd, that's a Sunday, uh, starting at 12 or 12.30, we're going to have the boat, Christian, for American Cruise Lines. Uh, the Splendor is a new ship that's still in, they're, they're in the process of finishing up the completion of it. And it will be sailing from New Orleans to Vidalia for the christening of it. Uh, it's going to be an event that we're going to have. We're going to have food vendors there. Uh, we're going to, it's going to be a very nice event. We have the Liberty Bells, which is in, on board entertainment from uh, uh, American Cruise Lines. Uh, our, our godmother of the ship is uh, uh, our congresswoman, Julia Letlow. So she well, is, is going to be our, our godmother of it, and the town will be the, the host, the god, uh, god town of it. So uh, it's really a, a nice event to be honored and, and, and recognized to be that. Uh, last, last year, y'all know Natchez got their ship, uh, the, the symphony, I think it, theirs was, and so we've got our ship now. So they will be uh, over here on our riverfront. You know, they got their dock completed. We're doing some improvements over there. You'll see uh, we've got uh, some painting going on. We're going to be starting part paint, painting on our riverfront. Uh, they're cleaning it all now, sandblasting it, doing all things to make it really nice. And then we're going to probably bid out the rest of it from the gateway on down to the end of the, uh, we're going to get more bids on painting. But I got, this was a small project that we were able to get by, but didn't have to do a whole lot of bids on to get those done, so uh, what is uh, the that's time? exciting. Yeah. What, what is the time? I didn't get the, the time. time. 
Uh, what time? It, it's going to be 12 or 12 30. I think I got to look at it. See, I, I just got in, but they had meetings today on it trying to finalize everything. So it's 12. Okay, 12 o'clock. And again, there will be food vendors there if you want to come on straight from church and, and get something to eat, and, uh, have some little entertainment. And then uh, we'll have the christening. Uh, I'm expecting Lieutenant Governor Nungesser to be there uh, and, you know, some other dignitaries. And so we'd like to invite, every, uh, invite the public to come out. Have a good time, be a good community day, and if it's raining, we'll go to the convention center. But it's going to be a fun day, so anyway. All right, the other thing, uh, I was wanting to just say, as far as projects go, you know, we talked about one of the things that we talked <coughs> about in the uh, hydro meetings, as far as the one of the biggest overrounding things that we needed was the Nichols, maybe the Nichols Drive filling in that ditch at Nichols Drive and the Viking Street uh, ditch, the estimates on those two projects. This is informational only. Uh, is 135,000 for the Nichols Drive ditch and for the Viking Street ditch, 1,145,000. Again, those are estimates and that's just for information. Last thing I've got and I'm excited about is I went today after my meeting at LEPA, I had a meeting scheduled at the uh, University of Lafayette, uh, Louisiana at Lafayette with the, uh, and I gotta read this because it's long, the Energy Efficient Sustainable Energy Center at, at the University of Lafayette and I met with three of their uh, main people as far as en energy renewals and, and, and stuff. And they are having to put in a, a deadline for concept papers for getting some of the funding for, it's a part of the U.S. Department of Energy Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations and Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Energy Improvement in Rural and Remote Areas. And they have to put a concept paper in and it's open to the communities that apply for it. They're under 10,000 and uh, they serve a rural area and they must be domestic entities. And the University of Lafayette is their concept town that they're turning in this application for is the town of Adalia. And what this would mean is they're going to, it's, uh, it, it basically, it, the overview on it is it, you can deliver marriageable benefits to energy customers in rural and remote areas by funding re replicable energy projects that lower energy costs, improve energy access and resilience, and reduce environmental harm, and demonstrate new and rural and remote energy system models using climate resilient technologies, business structures that promote economic resilience, new financing mechanisms, and or new community engagement best practices, and to build clean energy knowledge, capacity, and self-reliance in rural America. The, in a nutshell, what they're looking at for concept, what, why they picked Vidalia, is number one, the hydro was a big part of that. Number two was we are a town that could have a match if it's needed, it need be, which I don't think we are, would have to have the match. But they were looking at having solar farms that the town, because that's what this, this is actually, they, this, uh, this is a uh, research center for solar panels where I was at today, and they were looking at a solar field for, uh, for Vidalia and they would uh, use some of that solar power to uh, liquefy hydrogen which is something that can be stored for power and sent anywhere by truck or train or whatever all over the country or, or world for that matter so it's exciting that they used us for the concept town it's not that they're going to have to get approved for it and then whoever wants to apply for it no we're, we're the town that's in that that application for that concept. So it's pretty exciting and talking to these guys today. Uh, again, this is ground floor. I just found all this out today. I thought I was going just to get a, a, a tour of a solar field and uh, I found out it was a lot more, a lot, a lot of good stuff. And uh, this was uh, set up by Tom Outlaw. He worked for the Department of Energy out of New Orleans. He and I have become friends. <coughs> and he had been in selling Vidalia uh, on this project to these people. and. Uh, and he was also, Tom was instrumental in helping Syrah get that $220 million grant from the Department of Energy as well. So I'm very hopeful and, and that this, this is going to be something that's great for our town. So anyway, that's all I've got. And I'm going to ask to hear a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Here a second. Second. Second by Alderman Woman Denby. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.